Hello guys, uh, we found this generation 4 Lime scooter uh, totally banged up in the woods um, and since Lime is not even operating in uh, this city and they don't even answer any emails I, I found I took the liberty to try to uh, dismount and do a little tear down and see what's inside it. So it seems like uh, the guys um, at Lime or whoever designed this have done a really really good job. Uh, like everything is so well thought of and uh, yeah I'm, I'm really impressed and it's, it seems like somebody tried to hack this before and it's it's almost impossible to do it. But uh, so, so we're gonna have a look um, at the different parts uh, and see what they did. To start with, like you probably, if you want to hack one of these, you probably want to remove the battery to be able to uh, start it up because it has this um, on off system on it so that you, you, you cannot just get power out of it just immediately, you need to turn it on. And for that to be turned on, you probably want to remove it. So it looks like uh, these guys uh, have made a hole here to try to open it, but um, that didn't work. What seems to work though is, come on, here, uh, a couple of holes here. So you can actually drill, um, like, new, yeah, now this is actually removed, but. Um, you can actually drill here and unscrew and dismount the whole thing. Here, it's... Uh, yeah. This little thing, and then you just remove the whole thing. <laughs> just like that. So, pretty much brute force. All right, if you want to charge the battery externally while it's in here, this is the charging uh, jack, and it, it's actually just connected to the main power cord. So if you want it to only like it's directly connected to the same poles where the motor controller is. All right, so these uh, the battery, how it's locked into the holder is it's pretty intricate actually. It's a very sturdy thing. You cannot just take a crowbar here and, and try to, to bend it open. It's, it's extremely well done. Like everything in this scooter, it's um, very well done. Uh, so the thing is, uh, down here you have a little lock that just opens up this thing and then you can release it. So, you know, that's this little thing that just holds it like that. And this is a very intricate design. Like, I would have guessed that they just used a little solenoid to just uh, have a magnet just pull that open. But no, no, this is much more complicated than that. They have this little servo motor. This little servo motor, it just pushes this little thing here with a cogwheel and that one, um, <laughs> yeah, it pushes, you see, it's like a lot of pieces here. And the funny thing is, even this one, it has a, it's a, it is a geared uh, servo motor and it has a little controller for it. So this cable goes to the display and it sends, sends a signal to this thing, which I guess is some sort of microcontroller possibly. It has uh, some, um, it's not just to put some, some, um, some voltage on these wires, no, no. You have to do send some, I haven't figured out how that works, but you have to send something here to make this motor turn and just open up the thing. So, and it has some sort of sensor inside here, I would, I would guess. But uh, yeah, I haven't, uh, <laughs> I haven't really gone into that yet. Um, so the battery, let's look at it a little bit closer. It's a, like once you get it off the, the scooter, it's, um, it's uh, easy to take it apart. And I think it has, it's actually very waterproof here. I think you have seen these bikes uh, being like under one meter of water and they just worked. I rescued them and it, it, it works. Uh, so, I mean, this is a, a, also a very good design with this, uh, this uh, yeah, whatever it's called in English. Uh, it's a rubber thing there, so you can open this battery and you will see that it's actually uh, uh, four, these are I think standard 18650 batteries and they have like uh, four in par parallels, uh, so I think we have a 10, like a stack of 10 batteries here, so it's 36 volts. Um, 
and lots of amp hours. I think it says, I think it's like 12 amp hours, something like that. Uh, so a lot of power here, 500 watt hours, perhaps. Uh, yeah, anyway, here, here is the whole battery management system. Uh, come a little bit closer. And here, actually, this connector, this is the standard XT60 uh, thing that goes here. And this is like the whole battery uh, where it connects to, to the bike. So that goes in here. And then you have another connect connection here. And this one is the control uh, that goes to the motor controller. And that is not as simple. Like, I would have expected this to be a simple, you know, high for battery on and low for battery off thing. It's not, uh, <laughs> I think it's even encrypted this thing. Uh, it doesn't appear to be a canvas, but it's probably uh, some sort of RS-232, something like that. Uh, a bunch of wires, or at least uh, four wires there. Um, uh, so you basically have to uh, send a command to the BMS system here to turn the battery on and then this will turn on and you will get power from that XT60. Uh, my, my assumption is that this is also actually encrypted, <laughs> but I haven't verified that since this bike doesn't really work. So we haven't turned it on. Um, yeah, all right. So we have a, a few uh, interesting parts here. This is, I think, the balance charging of the, of the, the whole system. I, it looks like that, lots of transistors here. These are uh, double MOSFETs. Uh, so actually, um, it turns, like one of them turns the battery like output off, and uh, one of them turns the, 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 the input to the battery off. Uh, and and uh, this, I think this is the uh, probably the main CPU that talks through this connector to the motor controller and it accepts commands and decides to turn these on. So the funny part here is also, this is also much better and more advanced than I expected. These are N-channel MOSFETs and that means that they need to have a higher voltage than the, the whole battery to turn on. So what this little thing does is that it it has the battery, the whole battery is on 36 volts and when you manage to turn the whole thing on uh, you uh, well actually like if you charge it if you put like 40 42 volts here then it detects that you're trying to charge it and that means that this cpu here turns the whole mosfet bridge here um, on and you can see that the, that the uh, the gate voltage which is on that pin and which is also on that pin, uh, goes to, I think, like 45 volts. Uh, because, just because this, or like 50 volts or something, just because the CPU needs to put the gate voltage higher than, than the other things. So it has like a little charge pump, um, something that just uh, turns it on. So like, if you really want to turn this, this battery system on, you need to have an external um, voltage, uh, an extra power source. Uh, and, and this is because, I assume, because N-channel MOSFETs are really, really efficient. So th this is like a very optimal design. All right, this is the motor controller. It's a very big piece of equipment, uh, very, very sturdy aluminum, and it's completely filled. Somebody has tried to uh, open this, as you see. It's completely t uh, filled with this um, glue or it's not silicon, it's, it's something that's, that's probably good and it's probably there to, to uh, uh, keep it away from, from moisture and also to prevent this kind of tear down uh, hacking thing that uh, somebody tried to do before us. Uh, all right, uh, we, have, we have the battery cable. Um, no, this is, no, this is not the battery cable. This is the cable to the, to the motor. And you will see that it has three like big holes, that's the, for the main faces of the motor, and then it has also three other uh, small uh, holes. And anybody that is interested in motor controllers is uh, like me usually like used to seeing five uh, of these because these are usually uh, the hall sensors to to detect like the the motor face, so is to know where in, in the 
in the turn the, the, the wheel is. Uh, this is something else. I'm not sure what this is. This is something a little bit cool. It's uh, maybe some sort of one wire bus that is, um, you know, uh, encoding the turn of the wheel. Something cool like that. Because, like, these guys, they love advanced cool stuff. It's like, it's not enough to just put it like a simple thing on there. And this makes it a little bit hard to use. Like, this, this is also. This one is also not very simple to interact with. This actually speaks uh, canvas, uh, which is, I mean, a little bit more advanced than I would have expected. These are like these chips are are, are not like for free, uh, but it's very reliant and it also seemed. I actually did have a little look at the canvas protocol, and it did. It was not apparent how it worked. Uh, so. Uh, it might be encrypted, it might be something else, but like anybody that wants to hack this has to know exactly what they're doing. Alright, uh, let's uh, look at the, the drive, the uh, motor with the wheel on. This is a very sturdy thing uh, and it's, um, I mean, I think it's probably five kilos there. Um, okay, we see here these three motor faces and I actually connected this to this little thing, which I mean, it looks, it has tape on it, but this is a very advanced motor controller from, it's called the VESC, and it's from a brilliant Swedish guy uh, named Benjamin Vedder. Uh, and this one can power pretty much everything. So it can power this, uh, this uh, thing with no problem. Um, I think it has, yeah, I mean, this is a very, very strong engine, uh, I would say. It has, I think, wasn't it? like 0 0.4 ohms uh, in the windings, something like that. Um, anyway, here are the other the other little wires and the, the sensor wires, which we did not connect because these are, it's really hard to know what these uh, exactly do. I think, I guess it's like the, the ground and power and then you should get some sensor output on the white one. I assume it could be a one wire thing. Um, I haven't checked, uh, and but uh, this uh, vest controller it actually has some inputs for for doing stuff like that. So it uh, speaks a bunch of uh, protocols for for encoders. Um, so it it is possible that it's possible uh, that you can actually connect that one and get a better control of the of the drive through that. Didn't try that yet. This is the the gas uh, thumb gas here, and. That's also a thing where I would ex expect it to be a, like a simple resistor uh, thing with a, just changing a resistor value when you push here. It's not. It has three wires and it wants some, some voltage. So put, uh, you know, uh, five volts I think we put or three volts uh, over two of the wires and uh, then you get like a reading output uh, out from that between I think it was like 0.8 and 2.5 volts or something like that. So this little thing also contains some sort of, I assume it might be like some optical encoder or something. And it's uh, much more of course maintenance free than a simple resist, like a, vari a variable resistor. But it's also yeah much more advanced than I would have uh, done if I built this. But also like this bike is probably uh, yeah, one of the most durable pieces of equipment I've seen. It's like a, yeah, it's like a Volvo, but for e-bikes, it's it's sturdy.